awesome God. Yes, somebody ought to just give him a little glory, a little praise, a little worship this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Too much word and not enough spirit is a recipe for a disaster. Too much spirit and not enough word is a recipe for a disaster. You have to have balance. You've got to have the word and you have to utilize it. You have to exercise it. You have to analyze it. You have to apply it. And you have to have the spirit to be able to merge the two together. In the spirit you walk, in the spirit you praise, in the spirit you worship, in the spirit you intercede, in the spirit you travail, and in the spirit you speak in other tongues. But you cannot have one without the other and please God. It's, it's, it's a combination. We've had word this morning. We have spirit moving now. And I wonder if you could just lift up your hands and ask for the will of God to be done in our hearts and our minds and our lives today. Lord, we just yield ourselves to your ways, not our patterns, not our preferences. Not our desires, but the will of God. Your ways, your will, your desires, God. Your presence is here to work today. Use us for your kingdom. Lord, let us accomplish what you have set out for us to do today. Let us observe the table that you have set, the meal ready to devour. That God, we will receive the things of the Lord today. And all oh, we give thanks and we give honor and we worship you in this place today. You are awesome, God. You are amazing. Why don't you clap your hands into the Lord? He's in this place today. Turn to your neighbor and say, the Lord is present in this sanctuary today. Amen. Tammy, good to see you today. Been a little while. We're glad to see you back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to see all of God's wonderful people. Turn around and shake someone's hand. Sister Hoffpower, good to see you back. Maybe not fully healed up, but back. Good to see all of God's wonderful people in the house of the Lord. To all of our men that were able to participate Friday, we had a wonderful time. Thank you, amen, for our fellowship. Uh, also, let me say that there will be uh, a date soon submitted to the audience, probably somewhere it's between Tuesday and next Sunday on our, our men's meeting. Uh, it will be a small group that will be happening a couple of times per month. It will be done most of the time outside, sometimes inside, depending on weather. It will be done over food and over word. Not my words, but his word. Amen. And so there, there are small groups that are getting started up. Uh, if you feel the liberty to and you would like to participate in uh, some of these groups, uh, you will be hearing about them gradually amen and I wish uh, brother Riley your your granddaughter I, I wish that I would have had a video of when she came to the doors of the foyer of the church when she looked in the church she lifted up her hands and started smiling and started getting excited maybe I can get her to teach a seminar or something at the house of the Lord I, I love that. I love that. And I am grateful for that. 
Let me also say uh, uh, the church has expanded. As of Friday, we have legally transferred uh, the property, so the church now owns the property on Highway 42. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Between now and the rapture, <laughs> we may build the church. We may not build the church. We may have fellowship on that property. We may not have fellowship on that property. If he comes during the service, they can do whatever they want with it. Amen. I'm looking for Jesus, but I'm living as though he's going to tarry. I'm planning as though he's coming after a while, and I'm keeping my heart right, my spirit right. Amen. We're so glad to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. You can stand. You can sit. You can walk and worship. But whatever you do, magnify the name of the Lord with us in song.
a picture of his splendor. There's not enough words to describe the awesome wonder of your power. Come on and lift up your voice unto the Lord. Lift up your voice unto the Lord. Jesus, we exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is, is in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, God, for your touch. We're mindful of your ways, God. We're mindful of your ways. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you need prayer, just make your way out to the front. We'll anoint you. Just continue to pray and seek the face of God. If you need to be anointed with oil, just, just come down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord knows these names. Sister Spell, Sister Hansbro, Sister Vivian Walburn, Sister Barbara, Jeremy Ethan. Riley, the Lord knows all these needs on the screen, all those that are represented. Just lift up your hands if you have a need in the, in the house. God, we're asking that you would work and move over every need, every situation. I'm confident asking you to perform a miracle and a healing because you have already done it in times past. I reflect upon your power and capability of what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do. You're a way maker, God. You're a way maker. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful presence of the Lord here today. I feel the assurity of his hand. I feel his power. If our ushers will, will, will come and just put the pans right here in the front, and when we're done with service, worship the Lord in your tithings and your offerings. I'm taking you to the word of the Lord this morning. Oh, praise God, praise God. So grateful for each and every one of you, your families that are here in the house of the Lord, those that are working and traveling. We are grateful that they are part of this church and for what God is doing. It is easy to get distracted by only what you see on any given service. But if you understand the word of the Lord and you understand the working of the spirit that God is doing magnificent and wonderful things. Praise God. I got way more than I have time for. I'm trying to get comfortable here to decide how I'm going to, you know, it, it's, it's like, it's like the, the Thanksgiving spread. You know, you're there to eat. You're just not sure where you're going to start 
and what you want more of. And so I don't want to fill up on just certain things of my preference today. I want to fill up on the completion of the word of the Lord in the house today. He's a good God. Amen. If you're in perilous times, you ought to be rejoicing. The Lord is near you. Amen. If you are in good times, if you're on, on your game and everything's going well, praise the Lord and rejoice. Amen. This too shall come to pass. <laughs> I don't want to prophesy something negative, but you need a variety. Amen. You can't have pecan pie for a meal every meal. You've got to have some vegetables. You've got to have some uh, some broccoli and some spinach and some turnip greens. Oh, man, that with some ham hocks. I know the ham hocks probably cancel out all the good that, that it has, but, man, anyway, it's worth it. Praise God. I love God's people. Amen. I am grateful for what the Lord is doing. I feel like I'm growing. Amen. I haven't gotten on the scale lately, but I feel like I'm growing. I hope that spiritually, uh, more than it is physically, uh, praise God. Mark chapter 8, I'm probably wrong, but in my understanding, it's probably one of the most heart-wrenching, life-changing, foundation-establishing chapter in the entire Bible. If you just casually read through the pages of the word of the Lord in Mark 8, you would probably, through the surface, miss the tremendous evaluation of the depth and below the, the topsoil is, is the, the limestone and the concrete and the rock and the, the, the solidness. Verse 18 and verse 22 through 26, I'll start with 18, Mark chapter 8, verse 18. Having eyes, see ye not. Having ears, hear ye not. And do ye not remember. Now, I, I'm good at telling you when I... In certain brother G five and one. So let, let me give you my impression. Jesus hasn't forgotten Exodus. He's dealing with the same guys generation after generation. And and they want they want a sign. They, they want Jesus to bring out the tricks. He just did it. He just impressed them. He's not only leading the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but he has got a profound and a very deep, consecrated message for his disciples. He uses props. Those props are people with disease and 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 sins and troubles in their lives, but they were props in, in this particular chapter. Verse 22, and he came to Bethesda, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. Now, I might be wrong again, but I believe that, that uh, Jesus is the only one that healed the blinded eyes in the Old Testament and the New They've done a lot of cool stuff, a lot of changes, a lot of things happen in the body. Uh, miracles took place, but not the eye. Verse 23, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And when he had spit on his eye and put his hand upon him, he said, and he asked him if he saw. Verse 24, and he looked up and said, I, I see men as trees walking. So 
also one of the few miracles that were on a time capsule of delay. The other six incidences, but a whole lot more people were healed of blinded eyes, were instant. This man was drawn out of the crowd to come with Jesus and his disciples for Jesus to spit in his eye. Now, if you're going to spit on me, you better have some miracles following. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Don't mind it. Better have some works coming. <laughs> Verse 25, and after that he had put his hand again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. I want to preach on the title, Lying Eyes, Itching Ears, and a Forgetful Mind. Lying Eyes, Itching Ears and a forgetful mind. Let the church say amen. amen. Would you put your Bibles down and help me go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We need your help. I need your anointing. I need your directions. I need your instructions, God. Oh, that you would do what you desire to do in this place, God, through man today. Anoint me, anoint your people. Help us to perceive what you, what you desire to do. We give you glory in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And may the church say amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We have all seen things that we did not see. And if we are honest here today, on most days, we can't remember where we put the car keys, more or less, other objects that we have forgotten their whereabouts. We don't remember if we were coming up the stairs or down the stairs. We hasten to our partners to tell them a very important story. But when we get to them to tell the story, we forgot, wife, what we were going to say. There are things that are transpiring that we don't always process. Three brothers, ages 92, 94, and 96 live together. Uh, the 92-year-old or the 96-year-old was drawing his bath water and he puts his foot in the, and he pauses when he puts his foot into the, the, the bathtub water. He yells down the stairs, was I getting in or out of the bathtub? <laughs> the 94-year-old yells back, I don't know, I'll come up and see. He starts up the stairs and pauses then he yells, was I going up the stairs or down the stairs? The 92-year-old was sitting at the kitchen table having coffee, listening to his brothers. He shakes his head and says, I sure hope I never get that forgetful. He knocks on wood for a sign of good luck. He then yells, I'll come up and help both of you as soon as I go and see who's at the door. Yeah, we laugh so hard at that because we know it is a reality. <laughs> there are things that we misrepresent in life. There are things that we see that are not really what the picture is about. There are things that we hear that we shouldn't hear, and there are things that we hear that we need to hear, but we don't truly process what we hear. Then there's the mind in the process of it all. We are easy to misrepresent what is transpiring because in the mind there is a real play that unfolds 
a very favored vision and movie. It's favored because it comes from your perspective. It comes from your ideas. It comes from your senses and your beliefs. And whether it is right or wrong, you probably won't be convinced otherwise when you begin to declare your side of the story because your side of the story is how it is, how it was, and how it's going to be. It's what you put together. It's what you merged into your mind through the lens of your eyes and uh, the channels and tunnels of your ears that you begin to process in your mind. Jesus is doing some phenomenal things in Mark chapter 8. He starts with a meeting of a three-day revival in the wilderness. What well, all he preaches is not sure that we understand all the details of it, but we do understand that it was ministry at next level. It was Jesus conveying to men. It was Jesus trying to compel them to comprehend. It was Jesus that was trying to transfer them from a, a state of carnality, a state of corruption, a state of confusion, and a state of, of worldliness to bring them to a place of spirituality. In their eyes, they saw it one way. In their ears, they heard it one way. And in their mind, they quickly dismiss the accurate evidence of truth. Jesus is interested in his congregation. Three days of revival, three days of no McDonald's, three days of no Burger King, three days of no Cajun meals. They are fasting, they're partaking of the word. And Jesus is sensitive to the needs because he knows that they are fixing to go to a long journey to get back to their destination. He asks for bread, but the disciples are quick to try to kind of put their own twist on what Jesus was trying to say. He finds bread and begins to multiply it. He, he feeds thousands of them that were there. Then in the conclusion of the miracle, in the conclusion of the revival, there is some hesitance among the constituents. There are those that, well, I saw this and I heard this and, well, I don't remember that. I, 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 you sure that happened? I, I can't recall. As a matter of fact, it was a place where the Pharisees began to ask Jesus for signs. he just done a phenomenal miracle. Who else? You talk about a... You talk about a, a food industry of prosperity, you get Jesus on board. You get a loaf of bread and you're feeding 4,000 people. One loaf of bread multiplied. It's fish multiplied. There's seven baskets that are taken up after it's all said and done and everyone partook of it. Partake, partook of it. One of those words I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> the audacity of the congregation and its representatives, you know, they always for her someone to, to step out. It's kind of like children, you know. They, they want something done, but they're not sure you would know about that. Who, who's going to be the one to ask? And they just kind of push one out. And they push him out, and he's confronting Jesus, and he's, He's, show us the signs, Lord. Now, I don't know all what Jesus preached in the three days. I don't know all what they witnessed in the three days. And it's probably not going to make you run tonight but it, or today, but it'll put some, some fat on your bones. Somebody said, Pastor, i got to quit coming to church. I've got too much fat on my bones. <laughs> they want to see the signs. Jesus shows tremendous amount of flesh and he shows levels of emotional uh, activity because he's not too happy what they are requesting. How could they not see? How could they not hear? 
And how could they forget what he had been doing in the last three days of the revival? Not only that, but when's the last time one of, one of your religious leaders took a loaf of bread, hot shot, and fed the entire congregation of 4,000? But they were seeking a sign from heaven. The sign that they were seeking was not that they were doubtful of the miracles that took place. As a matter of fact, the sign that they were seeking was similar to what Jesus was teaching and fixing to educate the disciples that was prophesied in the Old Testament. For time's sake, I won't go to the scriptures there. But it was the same thing that concluded chapter 8. Who do men say that I am? There was a shallow understanding of what was present among them. There was not full comprehension of this great God that they serve, profess to serve made an attempt to serve. And so it agitated Jesus when they wanted a sign. It agitated Jesus because there was similarity. Some theologians believe it, I believe it, that there was a, a reminiscing of what took place in when, when God pulled the children of Israel out of Egypt and began to produce miracles and provide for them. Uh, because their eyes stopped seeing and their ears stopped hearing and their mind failed to remember what God was capable of doing. Let me just inject at this moment in time in this service. It is very dangerous for your eyes not to see what God is doing. Amen. You got to hear this preacher today. God's doing more than numbers in the earth. God is doing more than what you see within the confinements of a church. God is doing more. There are things that are in your presence that you are missing because your eyes are lying to you. You are not seeing the works of the Spirit. You are not seeing the miracles of God in your presence. Amen. We get caught up in looking over our shoulders on. Amen. Because I'm not driving the latest and the greatest. Uh, we don't have what they have. We're not where they are at. I've got to tell somebody today it doesn't matter if you're where you want to be. God is still working miracles. It's, it's the ear problem. The chapter 7 where he had to heal the man's ears because he was not hearing clearly what Jesus was trying to say. It was the fact that there was a problem in their doctrine. There was a problem in their understanding. There was a problem in their ability to process the power of God, the manifestation of God, and who God really was in their presence. I do believe that it is a dangerous place, church, where we get to where when we are serving God and we are predicating what is transpiring in our lives based upon the fluff of our surroundings. If there is money, if there is a lot of happiness and joy, if there's a lot of spiritual activity, if there is a lot of things that are transpiring here, if there's favor on all sides, and all of a sudden we allot that to the fact that, hey, men, we're where we need to be in God's loving us and favoring us. Hey, you are missing the mark, church, that you're on eyes are lying to you telling you that God is only in the midst of good things. I've got to tell somebody today that God is in the midst of broken things as well. God is in the midst of discouraging things as well. God is in the midst of, of, of subtracting things in our lives. Amen. Hearing, seeing, forgetting. The disciples, I'm, not, I'm not lost what to say. I'm trying to pick and choose. The disciples get wind of the emotional frustration of Jesus. They buy in hook and all. 
of what had just been told. Huh? But you're not going to leave here running the aisles today. You're going to leave here with, with some, some facts. They believe that Jesus is frustrated about the bread. Read it when you go home. Study it because it's, 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 it's an unfolding chapter. They believe that Jesus, his pause, his response to the Pharisees' warning signs, it, it's, it's interconnected to, to, to the bread. He's frustrated because we didn't have enough bread. He's frustrated because we didn't have enough signs. He's frustrated because there wasn't more going on, more miracles taking place. Jesus was not frustrated because they didn't have bread. He was frustrated because they didn't remember the miracles. He was frustrated because they can only relate to the power of God in the moment and not in the absence. Uh, you, go, you, 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 you ought to shout on that one. <laughs> it is a shame when we can only celebrate God in the moment of the manifestation of his power and his spirit and his glory. And he can't trust us enough. We're not worthy enough or trustworthy enough that God, when he is busy elsewhere, that he is not pampering us. He is not taking care of, we think. He is not performing, we think. Just because God is not present, manifested where you can feel him, touch him, and witness him does not mean that the teacher is not in the room, honey. It, it doesn't mean that he is not, he, he's not flattering you. He's not patting you on the back. He's not lifting you up, but he's back watching what you have deep in your spirit so he can analyze what's the next move because when he began to put the trick up for the disciples when he was using the Pharisees and the miracle of the bread that was manifested and feeding them and, and that they wanted a sign they wanted to know was he the mighty God was he not they were already questionable who God really is it's a dangerous place when you are absent from miracles when you're absent from an outpour of the Holy Ghost when you're absent from the presence of God that you lose your revelation of who God really is and, and, and God is not based upon actions. God is action. God's not based upon miracles. God is miracle. God's not based upon manifestation. He is manifested. But sometimes, friend, God's got to allow you in your flesh to take a time out that you can begin to stretch yourself and find out where you are at in your walk with God. So Jesus, man, I'm doing good on time today. I might could preach long, but I won't. We hadn't taken up the offering yet, and I don't want to affect the offering. <laughs> he brings this guy into picture. His emotions are high that he flees. Read it. He takes his disciples with him, and they, they, they jet on out. He leaves all those that didn't know where they stood. He leaves all those that he gave them an opportunity for three days to have revelation, and they missed it. They had eyes that didn't see, ears that didn't hear, and a mind that was forgetful. I know it's, I know it's popular. You don't believe me, go, go, go to Facebook and pull up a certain ministry. His first name's Joel, and I won't tell you his second name. <laughs> Biggest church in the country. Let me preach there. I won't preach any different than I preach here, but you're not going to have very many left. I'm not going to judge or criticize. I'm just going to preach the word of truth because, but, because Jesus is not interested in pampering. The introductory is a pamper session. But after the introductory, honey, you got to dig. You got to claw. You got to fight for it. 
if the mother would let the let, take that little eaglet and, and, and just cater to it constantly, that eaglet would never develop to be what it needs to be. If God would cater to you on the onslaught of the introductory into your walk with God, you would never be what God wants you to be. So God's got to begin to stir you up. He got to be the eaglet that just takes the e the eagle takes the eagle and just kind of chunks it out of the comfort zone for a little while and just kind of watching and see where it's going and what it's doing. If it doesn't respond, that, that mother eagle just darts on down and gets it and picks it up under its wings and brings it right back to the nest. Practicing, developing, stretching, building the muscles to one day when she drops that eaglet out of that nest, that eaglet's had enough strength that it is going to be able to go to the places that it desires to go. And so God is doing that. Jesus moves, he's away from the Pharisees, and now I, I know the Bible study today. We had a good one this morning. He's bringing the disciples to a blind man. He grabs this blind man and he takes him away from the crowds, and they jet away from him because Jesus is finding out. Is the same mentality of the Pharisees of Revelation embedded in the disciples that they have been around them? And I'm going to find out because I am going to specifically ask the question. You better be careful when you tiptoeing around Jesus because he's got intentions of asking you some questions. It's not always about us asking him. I know it's popular today. Oh, you can, you, can, you can question Jesus. You can ask Jesus. That's your prerogative. You can do what you want. I think I'm just going to trust him. I fear the Lord. I'm not scared of him, but I fear him, his sovereigns. I, but, but because who am I that because God saved me that I think I have, I have all of these entitlements that, that God's got to just Give me the, the, the banking card and I can just swipe it for everything I want. And, am I making sense to some spiritual Christians today that we miss the fact that, you know, when we, when, it's okay when he's multiplying the loaf of bread. We didn't have any questions about his deity when he was multiplying and doing the miracles. We didn't have any question about who he was when he was there healing them and, and delivering them and, and raising the dead and, and all these cool miracles. We didn't question who he was. He stopped performing, and when he was leaving, that's when they said, you know what, maybe he's not what we thought he was. In your quietness and in your stillness is the place you really find out who God is in your life. It's in your storm and in your trouble and in your discomfort that you find out who God is. Jesus goes to this blind man and he, he, he spat in his eyes. Can you imagine some of the things that God asks you for are kind of on, on parallel to insult. To see how we respond. Now, was there power in the saliva? Think about that one. Did Jesus need his saliva to envision the mind? And if the question is yes, under your theology, apparently he didn't put enough in it. Because when he questioned, he didn't question all the others. He knew what he was doing. He didn't question the others. What do you see? Everything all right with vision? Check. We, we, we 20, 20 Whatever perfect vision is, I don't know. I certainly don't have it. Don't laugh, sis. You got glasses. <laughs> I'm with you. The blind man sees men. He sees them but he sees him in a spiritual dimension. Now, I, that's another sermon for another day. I don't think it was an accident what transpired. Jesus was setting up his audience of disciples. That's who his audience was. Because there were some questions 
when they indicated the bread. They didn't, they, they didn't make great indications to the sovereignty of God. They didn't make great to do over the fact that Almighty is present. They went back to the signs. Are you frustrated because we don't have the bread, Jesus? Is this all about the bread? It wasn't about the bread. Just like it's not about your income. It's not about where you live. It's not about what you drive. It's not about your family. It's about revelation. And Jesus knew he was soon to depart and that there were, it was imperative that there was a sealed deal of revelation in their life. I'm almost done. I'm giving you hope. You're missing who he is if he's the God in the miracles. He's the God that takes you out of Egypt. The miracles was to help sustain you in transporting you out of bondage. The miracles is not God. It's an attribute of God. The healing is not God. It is an attribute of God. It is the characteristic of this great I am. The fact is, is that there was a reminder to Jesus how people can become so sign seekers. They can become so entangled into emotionalism. I've got to feel the presence of God. If your God is only in a favorite preacher, I'm going to preach to somebody right now. If your God is putting faith in a one-name preacher, you are missing what God is doing. If, you're, if, if, if your God is only in a certain group, and that group is, becomes an idol, then you are serving a group God and not an almighty God. No, you don't like that kind of preaching tonight today I'm all confused I forget <laughs> I didn't hear it and I certainly can't see it your mission and ambition your effort and your energy will always and foremost be placed in the almighty God in revelation of the almighty God it is easy for you to submit in a revelation of the almighty God it's easy for you to follow and to obey and to receive what the word of the Lord wants you to receive there were things that he was seeing that were not actually the things he needed to see at the moment there are things that that blind man, when Jesus touched him, was seeing was not what the man needed to see for the moment. Jesus was making sure that he was going to have clear human vision and not clear spiritual vision. He saw men in their spirituality. That's another sermon, as I said. But Jesus needed him to be healed and see men in their humanity. But he brings the disciples on a little bit further because this is really why he set it up in chapter 7 and verse 8. He set up the opening of the ear and the opening of the blinded eye. He set up the breaking of bread and he refers to the disciples and reminds them of the miracles. This is not the first time that Jesus broke bread. It's not the first time that he multiplied bread. It's not the first time that he had extra baskets full of fish to feed the people that were there. And the disciples slipped for a moment because their eyes were deceiving them. Their eyes were lying to them. Their ears were deceiving.
deceiving them. They were not hearing what the Spirit was saying to the church. They were caught up in sensationalism. They were caught up in the pressure of peer pressure by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were caught up in the realm of tradition for a moment, and they were missing the entire revelation of an almighty God that he wanted to prove to them. Amen. I want to tell you today that the most important thing that you can do is serve the almighty God. It is greater than any miracle. It's more powerful than any revelation of God's provision. It is more important than any because if you don't understand the mighty God, you will miss all of his attributes. You can't get attributes without getting the mighty God. You can't get attributes without understanding that the, the Lord our God is one. Let's stand. I preached long enough, I think. have some notes man way more notes than I thought number one some of you are gonna be proud of me we must not forget the things that God has done for us a forgetful mind go home and write the times God did a miracle God healed and where he changed things around in your life. B, remind God of your thankfulness for what he done when you remember what he done. C, pray for your eyes to see the works of the Spirit. Number two, be alert to hear what God is saying to you as an individual and to you as a church member. A, don't you like this? A, God's word is for instructions and revelation. B, God's word is intended to expand your faith and your belief. And C, don't forget what you hear. The word will get you through any storm and bring you out of any situation. Number three, final, guard your mind. Train your mind to accept spiritual things and reject carnal things. B, Philippians chapter four and verse eight, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Lion eyes will cause you to be suspicious about people around you when they're God's chosen, but you see them as a fallen angel. Itching ears will cause you to only seek out what you want to hear, regardless of it being true or not. And you can't forget that God brought you out of a pit of hell. And when you point to others, note they came out that pit of hell too and it takes time to get the garbage off of you. You gotta get that smell, you gotta get that smoke, you gotta get all the crud of the world off of you. I've thrown a lot of things out to this congregation this morning. And I close with we have 
to get back to the basics. To love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our soul. Because if I'm loving God with my all, I have absolutely no leftovers to bicker or to complain or to find my, you, you know, we like to get in that little place of feeling sorry for ourselves. I, I'm, I'm with y'all. I'm in the same boat. Some of you look at me and you say, oh, Brother Gotro, you don't understand. You're a pastor. Yeah. I'll be exempt when I get yonder, but I'm not here. I'm closing this morning to tell you that you need to remember who can take a loaf of bread and multiply it. There's nothing wrong with a miracle. I'm here to tell you this morning that he can help. I, I think this was birthed out, out of our prayer meeting last night, seeking the Lord. And I, I, I was so transparent to the Lord. And I'm, I'm sure my wife heard it too, but I was transparent. And I asked God to touch my eyes because I was processing things in the wrong scale. And I was hearing things that were the wrong voices. And I was forgetting what God has done in the past. And I prayed, and I wasn't on my knees. I was just sitting down where Brother Walburn sits. And I was crying out to God. God, let me see through your lens. Let me see through your eyes. I got to tell you, I know it's hard for you to believe, but I get frustrated with some of you folks sometimes. Sometimes, I don't even like McDonald's, but sometimes I just want to go flip burgers. I'm being honest with you. I have Bible for it because Jesus got frustrated with them because all what God's done and all of a sudden you lose your morale, you lose your, 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 your engagement, you lose your intensity, you lose your involvement, you lose your connection. And I said, God, I got to see people the way that you see them. I got to hear your voice. And, and maybe you're here today and you've seen some things that's puzzled you or set you back or delayed you. You've heard some things that confused you, that, that, that has, has just kind of isolated you and pushed you back. And maybe it's been too long, but maybe you forgot what it felt like when God truly cleansed you with his blood and purchased you with his blood. Maybe we don't need to look for tomorrow. Maybe we need to look in the past to find our energy of elevation in the spirit of God. Because Jesus brings him down What are they saying about me, guys? Who do they, who do, who do they say I am? But Jesus sets them up because he, he broadens the scale and takes the, the responsibility off of the disciples, and they thought they were clear. But Jesus said, no. <laughs> oh, great, y'all got y'all answers. Who do you say that I am? I want to ask you a question. Who do you say God is? These altars are open. I'm not going to.
going to give an altar call, but it's open at any time where you want to get a vision examination. Maybe you want to check your, your hearing, hearing loss. Maybe you want to check the mind for forgetting where he brought us from. I, I know we're not running the aisles today. But I just want to get you right back to the bait. Who, who, who do you say that he is? He's my savior. He's my deliverer. He's my forgiver. He's my restorer. He's my provider. He's my supplier. He is my guide. He is my Lord. He is my king. He is my savior. Who do you say that he is today? Certainly wouldn't might be from your slogan or maybe your verbiage, but it would be by your lifestyle. I, w I wish today that God would get a hold of us. I prayed for an anointing today. I prayed that God would flood this place with, with genuine transparency to, to get a hold of us, to, to, to dig us out with a spiritual shovel that we can, we can process, that we can evaluate, that we can connect, that we can become what, you, what he needs us to become, to become who he needs us to become. Help my eyes, God, today to see, my ears to hear, my mind to remember. Come on, the presence of the Lord is here today. The presence of the Lord is here today. Come on, we'll shout on another day, but today we just got to dig deep. We got to shift our attention off the bread and shift it on the Savior. Come on, will there be meat today in your spirit? Oh, God, I need you, I need you, I need you, Jesus. I need you in this place, Lord. I want to be what you need me to be. I want to see what you want me to see. I want to hear what you're saying. I want to remember, God, where you brought me from. I want to remember what you've done for me. I want to remember your intervention. wish somebody just cry out unto the Lord for a moment for help. David said it when I cried, he heard me out of his holy hill. I believe the Lord will help us today. I believe the Lord will speak to us. I believe the Lord will comfort us. Who he is is greater than what he does. Who he is is greater than what he does, church. Stir my mind and spirit in this place. Oh, God, make me, make me whole, make me well, make me strong, God. Lord, you've got plans, you've got purpose, you've got a mission, you've got a reason. We need you, Jesus.
I wonder if we could stand and just make a unified cry unto the Lord. Would you do that? Would you just cry out unto the Lord on your family's behalf? You better know the Lord has feelings. You better know the Lord has feelings when we replace who he is with what he does. Oh, God, I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. Come on, there's a powerful presence of the Lord today. Come on, there's revelation in this assembly today. There's revelation in this place today. Oh, God, I need you. I need you. I need you. Come on, God's trying to grow us today. God's trying to prepare us. He's trying to strengthen us today. I want to be unwavering. I don't want to, I don't want to be tossed with the, in every wind of doctrine, but I want to be stable and firm upon the foundations of his word. Come on, just lift up your hands in surrenderance to him this morning. His presence is in this place. I will not be moved. I will not waver. I lift up my eyes into you, God. Let me see the way you see. Let me look at people the way that you look at them. Let me hear what you were saying, God, in your word, in your impressions to me. And oh, let us never forget what you've done for us, God. God, you've been so good to us. Jesus, there's a, there's a phenomenal presence of the Lord here today. There's depth, there's strength, there's revelation here this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's my desire to offer you opportunity to expand your relationship with the Lord and also to have strength on your journey. It's the will of God. He gave them bread for the journey. So don't miss that God doesn't want to give you bread. He wants to give you strength on your journey. Amen. So grateful for each and every one of you. Amen. Good to see the young family back from turnaround. Are you turned around? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why don't we just lift up our hands and ask his favor upon our dismissal today. We're grateful for your help. 
for your strength, for your provision. Lord, for your wholeness and your wellness over our families, for your health over our church, for your blessings over this congregation, God. I pray today that you would leave us, God, or as we depart from this building, that you would not leave us, but that you would be near to us. But God, if you choose not to manifest, let us build, let us dig, let us grow. Lord, lead us, Lord, into this world as we leave this building today, that we will be effective, that we will be mindful, and that we would be considerate of you and your ways. Use us for your glory, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. Praise God. Love.